this is phase one of this job. We're going to knock out the foundation and I want to show you a little bit of the plans to get an idea of uh, the different options that we can do according to these plans. It's going to be a carport and interstate steel structures drew this plan up. So this is your basic shop drawing for this building and this is good to submit to the uh, building department to get permitted you just have to get a plot plan for this in other words where your building will set on the site in all your setbacks so i don't i'm not showing that part of it but that's going to be required as well so let's take a look at what we are building because this plan is unusual because there's multiple ways you can do the foundation for this here's a little bit of detail Here's your post height, your span, this asterisk right here. We have an asterisk here on this note. 12 inch minimal, so right here, there's your depth of your foundation. And they also want slope on this because it's not fully enclosed. Um, one side of it is partially open and the two ends are open. So that means rain weather can get inside so they do want some drainage one eighth per foot or required by local building code here's one option right here base rail clip so here's the outside edge of your foundation here's a little like an angle iron piece that holds this rail this is your galvanized steel base rail that's going to go all the way around the building and this is what holds it to the ground you can't really drill straight through because it's too close to the edge. It'll, and these are expandable, so if you were to go here with the bolt, it's going to break the concrete out of the side. That's why they're offset over here. So we've got two pieces of rebar, two number fours continuous. So these two number fours go all the way around the perimeter. And here's an optional item, four inch crushed stone. Base is optional. A six mil vapor barrier, that's optional. Also, you can actually widen, widen your foundation so it extends beyond the edge of building so that you can drill straight through your base rail rather than have that offset drill, which I don't like this system, so I didn't build it this way. Because to me, this looks like all the water coming down the side of the building is going to be trapped in here. And here's another way you can be done strip footings rather than a continuous slab all the way across the interior you can just do a little one by one well that, they actually want 16 on this detail and they want more rebar they want two top two bottom they want to go 16 and 12 inches wide no slab this would be just gravel this would be the interior of the building and it'll be a strip footing so that's another way to do it you know, it's less money probably to do it this way because you have less concrete. It's just a 12 by 16 inch all the way around the perimeter. And then you backfill the middle with gravel. Here's a nice look at the inside. So wire mesh, which I'm going to do this technique here. Two rebars all the way around continuous. Four inch concrete slab. Even here it shows here existing concrete slabs. If an existing concrete slab is used... The slab must be in good condition with no major cracks or spalls. So you can technically attach this building to an existing slab. There's another hold down technique right here. Rather than no footings at all, you're just going to use these helical anchors to drill down anchor that holds the whole building down to the ground. So there's no concrete involved with that system. Here's a look at the system I'm using again right here. Here's another hold down method right here. We've got a lot of different stuff going on in this plan. It about covers everything, every conceivable possible way to, to build these. And it's all in one, one plan. Every technique on here is engineered. Now you can use any one you want. But then there is a little detail here. Or as required by local building code. So that, that's the only variance which could be pretty substantial. So the system I'm using is probably the, is the best one on this drawing. It's where, the, it's where the, the rail, the base rail that holds the building down is right on the edge. That's where you're going to get the best drainage away from the building. So that's it. If you wanted to do a carport, that's how simple it is right here. 
I mean, according to this, you can attach it to your existing, like if I wanted to put it here on my driveway, I could just start bolting it down. Pretty simple. All right, let's get to building it. All right, have arrived on a new job site location. We're gonna be doing a driveway here. Also, we're gonna be doing another garage, kind of a carport in front of that existing garage. So it'll be like a drive-through, a little offset. So it's gonna start in line on the left side of that garage and then come over, I think it's 18 feet. So it's not gonna capture that whole door, but it will capture some of it. It's just gonna have a typical one by one footing. We've gotta get inspection on it. We're gonna have two half inch rebars, one top and bottom. Wire mesh in the middle. Uh, it's gonna be drill in. It's gonna be expansion bolts to hold down the uh, metal carport gonna have bottom rails that come down on the concrete and attach we will have slope on it probably about two inches and 30 feet something like that maybe three but this white line is what I marked out for utility so they've already marked the underground you got to use white you know so we've got the white lines where all the concrete's gonna go this little light pole right here we're gonna be taken down Put a new post in same light fixture but a new post but it's going to be setting over here a little bit out of the way coming back here this walkway comes back it's going to be all concrete all the way through here all the way to the garage that white line is just something to give underground utility something to look at but it goes all the way we've got a small planter along the back property line wall that uh root these roots right here coming out those are some old oleanders they're pretty dead so that's going to pull out easy especially with my hoe attachment this one's coming out as well this little you can see the oleanders trying to come back here that's going to pull out fairly easy once we get the concrete back here this shed's going to move over to here our concrete stops right here Right straight with this house. That's the whole scope of this project, really. Some concrete, foundation, little odds and ends, a little bit of wiring moving this over. Here's, here's how it goes into the garage right now. This doesn't look quite right to me. I gotta do a little LB right there, you know, and uh, bring it out and then under and then up. All right removal time all right so the first thing i'm going to be doing here is getting the grade or getting the elevation of the slab for this foundation the way i'm going to do that is kind of go off of the existing garage floor even though we're five feet away i can eyeball that five feet and just transfer it right on through to the you know 30 foot garage foundation or carport but this slab is designed according to the plan for a carport, but this is the same structural design as it would be for a totally enclosed garage. So you could do whatever you want with it, really. So once I get the elevation, the subgrade on that garage foundation, I'll, um, that's when I'll mark out the foundation and start digging the trenches, basically one by ones all the way around the perimeter. Okay, right now we're getting some string lines up because when I start digging, I've got a one foot wide bucket and it calls for a one foot footing. So I gotta be pretty accurate on the dig. So that way when I set the forms, I have one foot wide and not one foot to the outside of forms, but one foot to the inside. So we gotta lay it out accurately before we start digging. The way we did that is I pulled one line parallel to the outside of garage. That would gave me one side. Then I just measured out five feet from the front of this garage that gave me two lines. And then, you know, I wouldn't really build off of that at this point. I double checked it with a six, eight, 10 in the corner, to make sure it was square and it was. So that means 
that the existing garage was built well. So what I'm doing on the dirt that I'm pulling out of this foot is I'm just putting it into the wheelbarrow and Eric's bringing it out, stockpiling it where the new driveway will go. And then I'll just scoop that up once I tr uh, trade buckets. So I've got a little mismatch of form work here. I've got some two by sixes, two by eights, and two by twelves, all material I already had. So I'm gonna utilize it. What I'll do is I'll just underpin wherever I need to with the two by four or two by six. Where the two by twelve's going, I won't have to underpin that. The good thing about underpinning with a two by four is if you get concrete locking in the bottom of the form, you can just tear that up, that two by four, just leave it and bury it. But if you bury your two by 12 on the bottom, you end up losing a good two by 12 without an underpin to it. But there is an option to all that. What you can do is get some heavy um, felt and staple it to the inside of your form and roll it down into the dirt. Now prevent you from getting that mushroom out of the back side of your form. It does put more weight on your form though. So we got a nice early morning pour. We've got 3000 PSI standard one inch minus mixture here. Got some fiber mesh in it. We got the six by six 10 gauge wire mesh two half inch rebars around the perimeter. Couldn't back the truck all the way in, so using some come along, some shovels, whatever it takes to get it from point A to point B. Here's some of the stakes that are just kind of put across there to hold that rebar in place. We just pull those out as we go because the rebar is now being suspended by the concrete. Now this foundation, I actually put it about an inch and a half higher than the garage existing garage floor. The reason being is because when they bring the siding down, um, they can bring it on down past the outside edge of slab so the water will just run away from the building instead of into the garage and run away from it. So we're elevated all the way around. Once I put the concrete around this entire perimeter, we'll be about an inch and a half concrete around the outside edge, inch and a half lower. We do have about two to three inches slope from the existing garage to the front. So this whole slab has a little slope on it. This was 11 yards. This truck brought 11 yards here and we're about a yard and a half short. But I thought we might be short, so they know I'm calling them back right now. I'm giving them the yardage. Here's Eric here trying his new skills out, working concrete now. Eventually, he'll start wearing gloves once um, he realizes it hurts when you have cuts and you get the concrete in those cuts and then uh, you get infections because of the lime, it's called lime poisoning. So if you ever do get concrete in a cut, you want to clean it very, really good, scr actually scrub it. It's going to hurt with scrubbing it out, but you do that with um, baking soda and water to neutralize the concrete as you scrub it out. That'll prevent some of that. Um, if you let it fester in there, you're gonna end up with a scar. Here's the Fresno going on. We got 18 feet across, so we're nine foot. We got a nine foot section, nine by sevens. Uh, that's what each one of these squares are gonna be. So 
took about 45 minutes before we got our cleanup load. But I was keeping that edge, that cold joint, I was keeping it wet with the water hose and moving it around a little bit now and then so we could get a good tie-in. Here's your funny trowel. We got Joey here. He's um, still learning how to finish concrete as well. Yeah, we were able to mash that together pretty good as if it was poured all at one time. So this is our first pour on this job. We've got two more to go. The way I did this is on the first pour of this job site, I got my cleanup. On the next two pours, there is no cleanup. There are both full loads and we make it right on the money with two more 11s. Around this foundation before I pour the new concrete, I'm gonna be gluing on some expansion foam right at elevation. That way I'll pour up against that and this concrete here, if it wants to settle because it is new, and there's always some settlement on new concrete, especially a foundation, you want some expansion foam, any some type of expansion material. And we're gonna be using foam. Here's Joey going down the middle. Doug's on the far far left. Here I am on this right side, troweling it out. Got my little 12 by four, and I also have my 20 by four. We got down to that second load and we had to pull off because it was still a little wet. We are doing a broom finish because it, it is going to be slightly exposed to the weather because it's not totally enclosed. A nice light broom finish. But if you ever did want it a little more tight, easier to clean, like let's say they wanted to close this off and then put uh, doors on either end, make a regular garage out of it. You could throw some nice sealer on here. That would give you that smooth, easy to clean finish. Or you could even epoxy coat it. So we pulled all the vertical stakes at this point because we're using all steel stakes. So you got to pull those steelies early. Otherwise, you're not going to get them out of the concrete. You'd have to cut them off, and then you'd have a lot shorter stakes. So we pulled those. We left the kickers to hold the form in place. That way, we don't disturb the concrete. We'll strip this the next day. We did dig out all the concrete along the bottom of these forms while the concrete was still fresh. So we'll be able to pull the forms fairly easy on strip day. And here is strip day. See how those are coming off? I also pre-oiled these forms. I don't think I showed that, but I used some beautiful Mobile One Synthetic. And I diluted that with some diesel fuel. So I got the diesel fuel on my tractor already. Then I had the um, used motor oil out of my truck and it's a perfect uh, form oil. Anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell, that way you'll be notified on the next upload. That way you'll get to see the complete transition of this property. Bye.